Now, lastly, to the last part of the alimentary tract for what we call it the anal canal. We mentioned the uh, this term, the anal canal, a couple of times when we talked about the rectum. So let us uh, identify where this is the anal canal, as you see here, which is about four centimeter, and this is the last uh, part of the alimentary uh, tract or digestive tract, and it ends by opening outside uh, for what we call it the anus. So again, this is the anal canal that starts. It started from where? You know, this is the rectum, and the terminal part of the rectum is the rectal ampulla. Here is the dilated part. And we mentioned in the lecture previously that the, the rectum ends um, at the uh, one inch, at the level of one inch uh, below and anterior to the tip of the coccyx. That means, let me see if there is, we have here something okay so the rectum as we mentioned uh, that it ends just one inch this is not 100 correct one inch uh, below the um say this is the coccyx so one inch anterior and one inch below the tip of the coccyx say here so this is the terminal part of the rectum and at the beginning of the anal canal so this is the beginning of anal canal that means anal canal uh, uh, started from the terminal end of the rectal ampulla and uh, just one inch below the and anterior to the tip of the coccyx. In, indeed, we are describing the terminal end of the rectum and that means it's the same the beginning of anal canal and the anal canal continues and ends as I mentioned at the anus here the opening to the outside laterally if you look this is the anal canal laterally you have this uh, fossa for what we call it ischiorectal fossa ischiorectal fossa this fossa is the uh, ischiorectal uh, fossa okay talk a little bit about the relation of the anal canal and anus uh, for example here in the male and in the female you have uh, you are looking to the you have an inferior you for both male and female here and if you look at it here this is the for example the opening of the anus outside and the opening for the anal canal of course you know so anteriorly in the male it's related to perineal body and also in the female it's related to perineal body and the perineal body in the male is located between the anus and anal canal and the pulp of the penis. But in the female, it's located between the anus and anal canal and the vagina, right? So posteriorly, it's similar in the male and female in which uh, it's related to the posterior to the anococcygeal ligament, anococcygeal ligament from the from that circuit here and the circuit posterior in the uh, coccyx. Okay, now back again to the anal um, uh, canal here, in which in this figure you are looking to the coronal section, you remove the anterior part of the rectum and you look into the um, uh, to it like um, uh, in a frontal uh, view. So again, this is the rectum and this is the anal canal. Well, guys, you can draw the anal canal like as this. So we can divide it into two halves, the upper half and the lower half. Why we divided it in two halves? Yes, we mentioned that the anal canal started from the rectal uh, ampulla here. That means this is the upper half of the anal canal. Why we divide the anal canal itself in two halves, upper and lower? Because the upper half of anal canal originates, uh, I'm talking about the embryology, right? Embryologically, it originates from the similar origin of rectum and the uh, GI tract. That means it originates from the endoderm from the endoderm that means the uh, origination the tissue uh, the mucosa i mean and the blood supply and the innervation and the origin and the lymphatic drainage and venous drainage everything which is very similar to the rectum and gi tract while the lower half of anal canal originates from ectoderm from ectoderm that means the uh, 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 tissue the mucosa the histology of the mucosa here the blood supply the venous drainage the innervation the lymphatic drainage 
very similar to the skin and the area outside, right? That's why we divide it in this way. Let me erase it again and still, uh, guys, um, let us start with the upper half of anal canal. This is the upper half of anal canal that originates from the endoderm, which is um, uh, similar to that uh, 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 lining of the uh, rectum. That means uh, simple columnar uh, cells. Anyway, so if you look at it, you will see that it has a kind of longitudinal folds. These folds, we call them the anal columns anal columns between these columns you have like sinuses because of the existence of these columns we created a kind of not anal columns now you have anal uh, sinuses these um uh you see um the uh these sinuses fills the gap between columns and indeed they united inferiorly to form like teeth of the comp we call it bictinate line so this is the bictinate line the bictinate line is not only the border between the upper half and lower half of anal canal and it's not just the uh, location between the uh, uh, transition of uh, embryological difference between the upper half and lower half but also it indicates the uh, uh, the uh, area where is the upper half of inner canal up and the lower half of inner canal below and everything will be different histologically uh, blood supply innervation lymphatic damage and so forth and uh, so uh, most importantly that the bictinate line not as we mentioned just uh, earlier but also it's the location of the um, the location of the anal membrane that means here is a membrane should be here and normally uh, should be ruptured right it uh, divides the anal canal into upper half and lower half so it's the border we call it anal membrane which is very easy to remember if you need to know more about the embryology of the anal canal you can watch the lecture of the um, Imperiology of hind gut. It's on the YouTube uh, channel. Now, look at the. Uh, this area is the location of the anal membrane that comes from the cloaca, right? But normally should be this membrane should be degenerated and open. So that means the upper half of anal canal and lower half of anal canal will be uh, continue now and open to each other so this is another story but let us get back again to the uh, lower half of anal canal this is the from here from pectinate line um, and down to this line is the lower half of anal canal so the lower half of anal canal we call it also anal pectin anal we call it anal pectin, which is another name for, instead of say, lower half of anal canal, you, say, you can say anal pectin, which is a transitional zone. Why? Because uh, 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 from this point, for what we call it white line, not pectinate line, no, white line, because this is the lower half of anal canal. From this point, we call it white line or any cutaneous line, the uh, uh, the lining of anal canal now becomes true skin. That means back again to the upper half. In the upper half of anal canal, here is the histology or the mucosa was similar to the rectum. That means simple columnar. Now, in the lower half of anal canal here, the it is non-keratinized, non-keratinized, stratified sequamous epithelium. That means here is stratified sequamous but it is non-keratinized but when you jump from this line white line now it is a true skin this area from white line and below it is a true skin similar to this so it is not stratified sequamous just it is keratinized you have to remove this so it is keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium now uh 
let us uh, let me remind you guys if you uh, don't watch the um, lecture of the embryology the embryology of the hind gut why this is the upper half of anal canal and this is the lower half of anal canal right so the upper the upper part of anal canal uh, originally it comes the histology of it it's, it comes from endoderm that means similar to the rectum and the blood supply for it will be similar to the rectum. that means it's supplied by superior rectal artery which is a branch of what branch of inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery that means this is a blood supply that means the venous drainage will follow the artery that means the venous drainage of the upper part of anal canal will be by superior rectal vein in which the superior rectal vein as i mentioned earlier in this lecture in the rectum it goes up and continue as inferior mesenteric vein it drains into inferior mesenteric vein then the inferior mesenteric vein unite uh, drains into splenic vein the splenic vein united with superior mesenteric to gives the to give sorry the portal vein the portal vein to the liver that means the venous drainage of the upper half of anal canal will be to the portal circulation to the portal circulation again let me repeat it the blood supply superior rectal artery and venous drainage superior rectal vein this means superior rectal artery and superior rectal vein superior rectal vein drains the blood into inferior mesenteric vein inferior mesenteric vein it drains the blood also from the rectum and sigmoid and go it goes up and jo it joins the splenic or drains into splenic vein you know there's a spleen and splenic vein then the splenic vein forget that now splenic vein joins the the superior mesenteric vein not inferior no superior mesenteric behind the neck of pancreas and form the portal vein portal vein now drains into the liver that means this is the portal circulation that means the drainage of the upper part of the anal canal through the portal circulation while in the lower half of anal canal would that comes histologically it comes um, from the ectoderm it's supplied by middle rectal artery and inferior rectal artery and the inf middle and inferior rectal artery they are branch of internal iliac artery right although the inferior rectal artery it comes first from internal budendal artery then the internal budendal artery it's a branch of internal iliac that means and ultimately they are branch from internal iliac artery right this is number two that means the blood supply is different and uh, the venous drainage will be to the internal iliac vein right that means to the systemic circulation not to the portal circulate circulation that means the venous drainage the venous drainage of lower half of anal canal drains is to systemic circulation because internal iliac drains into um, uh, of course joins the external iliac and then to the common iliac and to systemic circulation of course right this is about blood supply and venous drainage and if you want to if uh, guys uh, because we are talking about blood supply let us jump now to the lymphatic drainage Lymph lymphatic drainage follow the same blood supply that means you know that the blood supply to the upper part of anal canal comes from superior rectal artery superior rectal artery is a branch of inferior mesenteric artery that means close to the inferior mesenteric artery you have um, close to the inferior mesenteric artery you have inferior mesenteric lymph nodes that means the um, that means the lymphatic drainage uh, from the upper half of anal canal will be through the to the lymphatic drainage here that known as inferior mesenteric lymph node now the lower half of anal um, canal it drains uh, 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 into superficial inguinal lymph nodes into superficial inguinal lymph nodes that means completely outside and different right now the innervation the let me erase these things and the innervation of the 
upper half and lower half of anal canal. The upper half of anal canal, you know, it originates from endoderm. And that means it um, follows the rules of visceral structures. That means it innervated by autonomic nerves, autonomic hypogastric plexus. That means when it's because the upper half above the pectinate line, that means because it's innervated by autonomic nervous system, that means um, it's uh, sensitive just only to, uh, just only to what? To stretch, right? It's just sensitive to stretch. While the lower half of anal canal that originates from, um, that originates from the um, ectoderm, so it's similar to the skin, and it's innervated by somatic nerves, inferior rectal nerve, right? Not autonomic, inferior rectal uh, nerve. And in this case, uh, it is very sensitive to skin. Uh, it's very typical, uh, similar to skin. That means it's sensitive to pain, temperature, touch, and the pressure, right? And here is, guys, uh, if you look at it here again, so this is the upper half of anal canal with anal columns and uh, between them is the anal sinuses and here is the anal valve in which we call it anal uh, bictinate line and below it you have the lower half of anal canal the lower half of anal canal guys you see here uh, anal pictin we call it and um, we mentioned um, everything uh, I think uh, uh, about the innervation blood supply and uh, origin as well. The anal canal guarded by uh, sphincters, we call them anal sphincters, and uh, indeed we have internal one and external one. So the internal anal sphincter you see here, you remember the rectum, let me show you the Again, back what we discussed earlier, I showed you, if you remember this uh, image, you remember that? And we talked about the external longitudinal vetinoculi that then spreads to form the outer longitudinal muscle, as you see here, but deep to it, you have these circular muscle. So these circular muscle you see here, is for its involuntary, and yes, it's in the rectum, and also it continues all the way down around the upper uh, three-fourths of the anal canal. Let me show you here back what we um, what we have here. So where is that? Okay. Okay, here is the, um, uh, I'm going to talk about now the internal anal uh, sphincter, as I mentioned, which is the inner involuntary circular muscle layer of the anal canal. You remember, as I showed you in the previous um, figure in the rectum, in which there is inner circular uh, uh, smooth muscle, which is most importantly, it's involuntary. That means it's innervated by autonomic nervous system. That means it's out of our uh, control, right? Uh, in which uh, pelvic splanchnic um, uh, and uh, inferior hypogastric uh, nerves. So these uh, uh, inner circular muscle, you know, this is the anal canal, this is the upper part of the anal canal, and this is the lower half of anal canal. So the inner circular muscle that forms the internal anal sphincter, uh, you know, guarded or controls the uh, anal canal all the way until it reached the white line or Hilton's line. White line or Hilton's line, we call it also anicutaneous, uh, anicutaneous line, right? That means the lower part here, which is close to the anus, um, has no internal anal sphincter, just keep in your mind, but it's replaced by external one, right? So, this is about the internal anal sphincter in which we have no control over it. We have no control over it. But uh, to you, you mean uh, uh, prevent the uh, 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 abdomen gases or feces from getting out when there is uh, pressure in the rectum up. But indeed, we have something to control it, and we have co um, control over it. That you know, we have a skeletal uh, striated voluntary uh, muscles. You see here where they are indeed voluntary 
uh, muscles in which uh, they are innervated by somatic uh, nerves and indeed they are skeletal muscles so you have three bands as you see here you have one here close to the skin and you have another one here and you have one deep here so the most superficial one just deep to the skin when you open just the skin you will find it there uh, around the anus we call it the subcutaneous part this is the all of the three muscles here they form the external anal sphincter the external anal sphincter you remember here is the internal and we have external the external formed by skeletal muscles they are voluntary they are striated muscles so we have the innervated by somatic nerve there are three parts the first one just under the skin which is superficial we call it the subcutaneous part right it has no bone attachment it doesn't attached to bone now just deep to it uh, uh, which is around say the uh, uh, lower half of inner canal we have here the superficial part and the deep to it you have the deep uh, part that means you have subcutaneous part you have superficial and deep um, parts the uh, superficial part is the only one that's connected to bone right through which here for example if you look at it here uh, here is the superficial one attached anterior to the perineal body and posteriorly uh, to the uh, coccyx through the anocoxygeal uh, body anyway it's just to know that just the superficial one is connected to the um, uh, it has bony attachment anyway let me explain it again for you the sphincters of the anal canal this is again the rectum right so you are looking to the whole tube of the anal canal and this is the upper part of the rectum and we mentioned earlier in this lecture that the uh, border between or the area where is the rectum continues as anal canal is this area where we call it anorectal flexure or anorectal junction and this anorectal flexure created by a muscle which is like u shape that creates a kind of a sling uh, around that area between the rectum and anal canal we call it a buborectalis bubo rectalis we talked about it you can watch the uh, uh, this lecture area anyway so and you have the internal anal sphincter and external anal sphincter where is the internal anal sphincter yes this is the rectum and you know that the rectum composed from uh, outside longitudinal muscle not shown here and inner circular so this is the inner circular um, a smooth muscle that encircles not just the rectum but also the anal canal all the way to except the lower part which is the um, up to the uh, anal area or white um, uh, let us say white line or white uh, yes white line or Hilton's line or uh, or what we call it also sometime the inicutaneous line anyway this is the internal what about the external the external is these brown muscles you know just under the skin this is the anus opening so there's a skin here so just the external anus sphincter that we have control over it uh, there are three parts subcutaneous one superficial and deep one of course now so we talked about the internal anal sphincter that we have no control over it and the external anal sphincter composed from uh, three parts now also you remember from the figure of the rectum that i showed you that yes the muscles you remember the tina coli as i mentioned that then at the rectum it spreads to form the outer longitudinal the outer longitudinal muscle so it exists here but it's not shown in this figure it's between the internal and the external anal sphincter so it should be here and uh, here it's also it helps also um, in that in the control and guarding the anal canal of course again 
uh, we cannot ignore the important function of puporectalis. That means you have internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, and you have the longitudinal muscle, and you have the puporectalis that forms a sling. Of course, let us jump here. Let me show you the external anal sphincter. This is the subcutaneous one, which is under the skin, and here is the superficial one that has pony attachment you know you know what i mean and you have the deep one the deepest part this is in the external anal uh, sphincter that have we control over it but before um uh, uh, uh jump uh to the blood supply or something like that let me uh, uh explain one thing to you which is something called anorectal ring. Ano, ano, rectal ring. What's this ring? What? This is the rectum. This is the anal canal. Where is the ring? You see, we have three parts. The deep part of the external anal sphincter and the pupo rectalis and you see this black color, the smooth uh, muscle that forms the internal anal sphincter? Yes, we, we, I mentioned that the, in, the internal anal sphincter, the internal anal sphincter formed by this smooth muscle, right? So these three parts, the deep part of external anal sphincter and puporectalis and the internal anal sphincter, they form a ring we call it anorectal ring which is very important in the control of the fecal continence that means in a key in, an, in a way or another if there is an injury uh, for example during a surgery or during a visit me or um, by mistake if there is uh, a rupture or a tear in the deep uh, pubic tennis and smooth muscle that means you will get fecal incontinence you cannot control the feces from getting out so these are very important right okay so uh, here is again another uh, figure show you the internal anal sphincter that's formed by smooth muscle and you have the external longitudinal muscle that helps as well and away from internal anal sphincter that formed from a smooth muscle there is external anal sphincter with three parts subcutaneous superficial and uh, deep and this uh, vitro and i should be here the puporectalis Uh, shift back again to uh, talk about the the internal and external hemorrhoids and to understand the external and internal hemorrhoids we have to understand the blood supply and the venous drainage which is most importantly and I think from the beginning at the beginning of the lecture we um, uh, mentioned that the uh, superior rectal artery which is the uh, uh, chief artery that supply the uh, rectum, which is a branch from the uh, uh, inferior mesenteric artery, if you remember, let me choose the, this color. You remember the inferior mesenteric artery, the, you know, the terminal end of the, mesenteric, of the inferior mesenteric artery is the superior rectal artery that supplies the upper and middle part of the um, rectum plus um, yeah, it's in it supplies the upper half of anal canal, right? Now, uh, it's good to mention here that the superior rectal artery at the level of S3, that means at the uh, say level of the junction between at uh, the junction between the uh, rectum uh, between the sigmoid and rectum that means at the beginning of the rectum here is the superior rectal artery divided into right and left branch and then the right branch divided into anterior branch and posterior branch that means you have at the level of s3 the superior rectal artery that means at s3 that means at the beginning of the rectum the superior rectal artery divided into right and left branch then the right branch divided again into 
anterior and posterior uh, branch. So keep this in your mind. Why? Because the venous drainage, I mean the superior rectal vein, follows the same uh, the same uh, path. So that means here again we reach the uh, superior rectal vein. So these are the tributaries of the superior rectal vein, which is indeed arranged in the similar manner to that of the uh, superior rectal artery. And you don't have to be surprised if you get internal hemorrhoids. In hemorrhoids, that means in Arabic, البواصير. Hemorrhoids here, Bawasir. So you don't be surprised if you uh, find internal hemorrhoids at this area. That means that what you have here, you have uh, two veins on the right because we mentioned that this is the right, this is superior rectal vein, and this is right, and this is the left one. The right has two tributaries, right, the anterior and posterior. Um, right, that means you have two on the right and one on the left. Okay, before jumping to the uh, before jumping to the hemorrhoids and what does it mean what we mentioned, um, it's good to remind you, my friends, that this is the inferior mesenteric um, uh, vein and this is the superior uh, rectal vein. And the superior rectal vein it has a tributaries, as I mentioned. You have the right one with the uh, anterior and posterior one, and you have the uh, left one. So the uh, superior rectal vein with the tributaries, it drains the blood from the upper half of anal canal, while the lower half of anal canal it drains the uh, blood through the inferior rectal vein, right? That means, as we mentioned earlier, the inferior half of anal canal drains into systemic circulation, into ultimately internal iliac vein, right? I know, internal, uh, the inferior rectal uh, vein drains into bugendal vein, then a bugendal vein to internal iliac, and ultimately the internal iliac united with the external iliac to form common iliac. Anyway, that means the blood from lower half of anal canal will be drained into systemic circulation, while the blood from upper half of anal canal drains into portal circulation, as I mentioned earlier in this lecture. That means uh, uh, another uh, you know, we have many places in which the systemic and the um, uh, portal circulation united with each or make an stomosis. There is connection. So at this area, look at this area, which is, um, uh, uh, look at these plexuses here, which is a connection between the, um, between, let us say, the systemic, uh, circulation and portal circulation. It is at the located, if this is the pectinate line, so they are in the upper half of anal canal. We call them internal rectal plexus. While also you have another plexus outside, which is out of the musculature of the anal canal, outside under the skin here, they are external rectal plexus. Not internal rectal plexus, external rectal plexus. Although, they are outside uh, the rectum and away. They should, some somebody can say, they we have to call them external anal plexus. But I don't know. It doesn't, the term is like, uh, doesn't indicate uh, what it does mean. But anyway, we call them external rectal plexus. So, um, Hemorrhoids can occur, uh, can occur anywhere, can these plexuses or in any tributaries of the um, uh, uh, veins. So let us start with the internal hemorrhoids, or what we call it, uh, piles. يعني البواصير الداخلية. So you remember the again the superior rectal vein here, right? And you remember also because they. Uh, it follows the path of the superior rectal artery in which you have the right here and left here tributary and the right formed by two, anterior and posterior one, right? 
the anterior and posterior tributary form the right and here is on the left you have left tributary they united to form superior rectal vein that means if you follow them if you look uh, here let us say a uh, throw protoscope through the anus and look to the rectum here of course we are we are talking when you say internal hemorrhoids that means above the pectinate line above this line right in the upper half of anal canal right because we know that the severe rectal vein it drains the upper half of anal canal that means when you look inside you will find like hemorrhoids or dilatations of veins and you know in the in the anal canal we call them hemorrhoids in the esophagus for example we call them esophageal varices esophageal varices in the lower limb for example we call them varicose pain right different terms it depends where is the dilatation where it, uh, where is the uh, varic where, where where is the dilated vein uh, uh, located anyway in the anal canal we call them hemorrhoids right so the internal hemorrhoids when you look through the protoscope with a patient in lithotomy position you will find dilated veins or you expect to find hemorrhoids or dilated vein at the level of clock number seven clock uh, uh, 11 and at three clock at these three three seven and eleven you know why because you are looking from inferior right there is somebody in lithotomy position and you look through the anus and if you remember this you remember this right tributary divided into anterior and posterior so this one the anterior one which is number 11 and the posterior one which is number seven uh, this is the right and the left you have just one which is this one located at the position of three clock that means three seven and uh, 11 now because you know again this is the internal um, uh, uh, internal rectal plexus and this is internal hemorrhoids above the pectinate line and you know above the pectinate line the internal half of the upper half of anal canal the upper half of anal canal here uh, where is the internal hemorrhoids located uh, it's originated from endoderm. That means it's innervated by autonomic nervous system. That means it is sensitive only just to stretch. That means you will get like pain um, from internal hemorrhoids in case if there is a stretch to that area, like in case of constipation, right? And most common sign of internal hemorrhoids is the bleeding. Sometimes you don't know that you have um, these kind of... Um, uh, hemorrhoids except you have a kind of ache and pain or a kind of um, uh, uh, like after defecation you get like uh, fresh blood coming out from there and it's painful just in case you have constipation because there is a bee stretch the autonomic nerve the autonomic or the viscera here because these structures are innervated by autonomic nerves it's sensitive just to stretch like in case of constipation right this is the internal Homeroids. Now the external hemorrhoids, uh, usually it's um, outside, pulsed outside. We don't care now about the degree, if the first, second, third, fourth degree, this is something related to the clinical. And anyway, to external hemorrhoids located outside in the lower half of anal canal, this is the pectinate line, so this is the location of external hemorrhoids. As you see here, this is a venous, uh, this is the in, um, external um, uh, external rectal plexus and you see here which is a location for um, uh, hemorrhoids we call them external hemorrhoids and because they are from the uh, surface of the anus and lower half of anal canal and you know the lower half of anal canal which is uh, innervated by somatic nerve somatic nerve that means it's innervated by inferior rectal nerve indeed which is somatic nerve that means it's sensitive to pain temperature touch and the pressure you cannot sit on the chair right because of the pressure sensitive to uh, so pain temperature uh, and when you touch it it's really so painful and um, uh, uh, painful because it's innervated by somatic nerve the inferior rectal nerve which is similar to the pain of the uh, skin right 
that's uh, that was about the uh, anatomy of the rectum and uh, anal canal thank you for listening and uh, hope you find value in it thank you these are our references thank you